Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tony Alessandro. Thank you. Thank you. I learned many years ago that there's a very big difference between simply making a sale and creating a customer for life. Now, I learned that in my first full-time sales job back in 1966. I was working my way through college, figured the best way to earn money to pay tuition was to go out and sell. And not just sell, but sell on 100% commission. No sale, no earnings. Now, back then, I was a little naive in terms of what kind of product to sell. Back then, my first job was selling cookware, china, crystal, and cutlery, basically door to door. My target market, single women between the ages of 18 and 21. I was 19, it's another story. <laughs> and my target territory was central to southern New Jersey. And we were taught very interesting more manipulative techniques, hence, years later, my book, Non-Manipulative Selling, it was an outgrowth of this first sales job. We were taught in, in our initial sales training to go through some very basic steps, only to make a sale. We were taught to go in and have three to five minutes of small talk, do a little bit of information gathering, but it didn't matter what they said, we still jumped right into our canned pitch, and then we got to the two last sections of our sales training, 101 ways to overcome objections and the 25 power closing techniques. I love that because I love the titles of the closing techniques. The tie down close, the sharp angle close, the last ditch close, the mother-in-law close, the half Nelson close. All techniques to use against the customer to simply make a sale. Now, I didn't realize the impact of this until I actually was in selling and, and selling cookware and not getting repeat business and not getting referrals. In fact, we were taught, as soon as you make the sale, do not ask for referrals. Instead, we were taught, as soon as you make the sale, get out before they change their mind. Go back a week or two later, which is what we did, and we would physically deliver the cookware. Once we delivered the cookware, we would then ask for referrals. But even the way we asked for referrals, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. To this day, I still remember it because we had to memorize it. What's your first name? Linda. Linda. Linda, you don't have to do anything, but let's just make believe you bought the cookware. I think I did that. You did buy that cookware? It was good. I got an extra set here if you're interested. Three-ply surgical stainless steel, copper interior. Bake like plastic candles. But anyway, this is how I would ask for referrals. Now, you tell me if something doesn't sound or feel right. But again, we were only focused on making the sale, focused on that single transaction. That was it. So here's how I asked. Linda, what I want you to do, go get your appointment book. You and I were going to sit down and go through it page by page and you're going to give me the names of all your friends that you believe should take advantage of the same opportunity you yourself took. <laughs> Said smile. Now notice how I asked. I did not ask. Linda, do you have a book? No. Nor did I ask. Linda, would you please get the book? No. This was Jersey. Linda, get the book and let's sit down. Now, invariably, Linda, people like Linda, they'd look at me and say, Tony, I, I, I can't get the book. I would say, what do you mean you can't get the book? You don't have a book? <laughs> well, you don't have friends. <laughs> She'd look at me and say, Tony, it's, it's not that I can't. I won't. And I won't, because I don't want you to do to my friends what you did to me. Hey, Linda. What did I do? She looked me right in the eye and said, Tony, you sold me. Hey, that's what I was supposed to do. That's what I was taught to do, and I did it pretty well. 
But the way she said it had a very different edge to it, didn't it? You sold me. People love to buy, but never want to feel that they've been sold or taken advantage of. And I have to tell you, unfortunately, I heard something like this over and over and over again. But it took me a while to realize that, that things weren't right. I did this for three years until I finally realized something's wrong, and I decided to switch products, not approach. So I stopped selling cookware and started selling mausoleums. <laughs> I needed a good career coach back then. Now, I did that for one year until I ran out of prospects. <laughs> sold life insurance for a year, sold residential and commercial security systems for a year, using the same approach, and guess what? Same results. And it was then, right around the mid-70s, right around 73, that I said, you know, something isn't right, and it's not about the product, because I'm getting the same results with all the different products. It has to be my approach. And it was then that I started looking for a very different approach to selling, that would make me feel good and proud, actually proud about what I was doing, make my customers feel good about the interaction, but more importantly, build some long-term momentum for me in terms of repeat business and referrals. And it was then that I started looking for another approach. Now, the outgrowth of that in the late 70s became my first book called Non-Manipulative Selling. But as I was doing my research, I realized that anybody in the business of getting and or keeping customers has to go through four basic stairs before they get to the ultimate of customer loyalty. 